Hey guys, what's going on? It's that Home Theater Dude. Got a brand new episode for you today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Basics A700. This is an Emotima amplifier. And if you guys want to be using external amplification for your actual um, setup, uh, this is basically going to be a quick little review to show you guys what the actual product entails. If it's right for you, if it's not right for you, um, just go ahead and stick around right after the intro and I'll go ahead and talk about the specifications. Okay, so let's talk about this thing. This is the Emotiva Basics A700 amplifier. This is seven channels, and if you want to run all those channels at the same time, you're going to be getting 80 watts, and that's at 8 ohms. Now, uh, the dimensions on this thing are going to be 17 inches wide, it's 4 inches high, 15 and a half inches deep, and this thing tips the scales at 29.4 pounds. You can also have a option to rack mount this if you don't want to actually have it standing up. And then let's go ahead and look under the, the hood, so to speak. You have a massive Toro transformer, and this is a class AB type of amplifier, so it has those massive heat sinks as well as those fans to keep everything nice and cool. And in the rare event that you have a fault, those blue lights on the front will turn red to indicate that you have a problem. So there's a couple different reasons why you would want to go with external amplification. Now, I kind of touched on this on my last video with the Emotiva um, amplifier whenever I unboxed it. I'll go ahead and leave a link right up here. Um, but basically, if you want to be using external amplification, the main reason is, is if you look down here at the Denon, different models have specific power requirements that they put out. And it's, it's, it's kind of like a um, two channels driven type of thing. It's always been like a, uh, uh, like a little tip of the cap that, that whenever they actually give out the ratings that they're not necessarily accurate for all channels driven. Whenever you want to do all channels driven and which if you're going to be buying something like uh, you know a, a, an expensive receiver you want to be using all of those channels right? So if uh, you have an AVR that has you know 9, 11 type of channels those end up getting really hot and heat leads to um, decreased products I mean it destroys products and it degrades sound. So if you want to go ahead and take some stress off of your AVR or your receiver, I would go ahead and recommend doing some external amplification. If you guys haven't tried it before, these are a great way to jump into it. Uh, these are 80 watts per channel, and that's going to be all channels driven. And that's going to be at 8 ohms. But if you want to be doing like, if, if you want to buy this for a two channel operation, it's going to be putting out 110 10, uh, watts at 8 ohms. But I mean, the reason why you would want to get massive amounts of channels, like a seven channel amplifier, to maximize this one's abilities, I would probably say use it specifically just for heights. So if you're gonna be using that as heights, if you already have external application for like the rest of it, typically with the receivers, if you have just one, one stereo pair of channels, like if you buy a nine channel amplifier that has nine channels of internal amplification, you buy uh, just two channels and you can make that nine channel amplifier. If it has the processing power, it will give you those 11 channels. So it'll give you a, you know, a 7.2.4 type of setup or you know it gets even more than that and the last number the dot four is the amount of height channels that you actually get with the denon down below this this one is capable of doing um th this one right here is 4400 and that one's capable of doing five overhead type of speakers and the way it does it is whenever you put it to oro 3d with the voice of god it basically spits out the last little bit of preamp um uh, abilities to the subwoofer 2 output so if you want to have your four channels up here and then you want to have your fifth channel, which is going to be right above your, your listening position for 3D Voice of God, uh, that's basically how you do it. So you're going to need five channels for the 4400 or the 4500 or wh whatever nomination it is to actually get to that. But if you want to have the 13 channel type of operation and you want to do seven overhand channels, I definitely recommend one of these. It's more than enough power to power, you know, mostly anyone's overhead speakers and it'll sound great at the same time. It takes the pressure off of your AVR and then it allows you to actually do that processing power and to actually have that sound in your, your type of environment. If you guys haven't tried Oro 3D before, it, it's, 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 it, it sounds great. I mean, whenever I had my old setup, I used to use Oro 3D as my normal daily type of um, system or setup codec. And whenever you listen to this stuff, it up mixes all the stuff. It doesn't matter if it's mono, uh, stereo, doesn't matter if it's in just regular 5.1, it'll actually up mix that stuff to actually utilize your overhead type of speakers. And if you have something that's actually mixed in Oro 3D, and the common misconception is there's no content for it, and that's just not true. You go on the website and you actually check it out, there's tons of uh, actual movies that were actually filmed with Oro 3D in mind, and whenever you have the codec playing and you actually have it set up, it's gonna sound really great. 
So um, with that voice of God, those seven, those seven channels can be um, utilized, or if you want to be using this type of setup, what I have right here, I would be using five channels. Uh, since I went ahead and put the projector in, I moved it a little bit back, and I moved the couch back. I pretty much deleted my Voice of God channel, so I can't really have it much anymore. But you still have the ability to have those overhead speakers. And uh, traditionally, if you're going to be having 80 watts a channel, um, you're going to be wanting that for something a little smaller. You will be able to drive big towers and uh, center channels and things like that, or even your whole horizontal stage, your 7, 7.0, I, I, I guess it would be. You are able to do that with with this type of amplification, but if you want to do it really efficiently, um, you're going to want to do um, more power rather than less power. The reason why people blow up speakers is because they have less power than what they need. So if you crank the, the volume on these things, even if it's set up absolutely properly, um, if you have just that one little peak, that's going to um, push your amplifier or push your uh, receiver past that threshold, your amplifier is gonna spit that out into your speakers, you're gonna clip your speakers, and then you're gonna have problems with your, your speakers with distortion and things like that. So um, there's lots of different reasons to go external amplifications, and with this one right here, this one is great, especially for, uh, for heights, and that's gonna be my rec recommendation for it. So if you guys like this video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like down below. Um, <laughs> make sure to go ahead and leave me a comment too. If you guys want links to any of this stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that down in the description as well. Um, it was a lot of fun doing this and it's really cool to actually be working with Emotiva because um, this is just the very beginning. I'm going to be getting the XPA series very uh, next and then hopefully I'll be able to get some speakers in here, some subwoofers, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. So if you guys have anything you want to see specifically, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. I'll go ahead and check you guys on the next video.